Hi guys, welcome to Simray YT and today we'll be doing the dungeon map in the Dragon's Lair. Now with the Dragon's Lair it gives you civil and you can get speed and lifesteal sets, some of the most important sets in the game. This makes it easier to build a dragon slaying champion team. To get past the, dra the first and the second rounds you will need to be some strong AoE attackers then once you get to the dragon boss himself you will want to place decreased defense and decreased attack debuffs on him while having healer champions in your team and removing debuffs champion from your champions. Now Hellraiser's signature skill is inhale, Hellraiser is the dragon. A passive with a 3 turn cooldown which resets your champion's turn meters and unlocks his scored skill for its next attack. Scorch does a lot of damage and places a team wide stun as well that can be, can't be blocked or resisted which then in turn gives Hellraiser's two attacks in a row. Now also he has a section which is a purple bar in his health. If you can deal that amount of damage of that purple health bar before his next turn his Scorch will, not, will be in lockdown again. Once you get into the higher levels, if you have champions with poison and HP burn, that will help as well in the harder stages. But before we get underway, I want to show, I'm only a low level player. So we'll show the Great Hall to show you where I'm at. So the, my videos are going to help out low level players as myself, mid range players. So you can see you don't need to have your Great Hall and everything maxed out, as long as you've got some of it done. You know, work on your accuracies, that's the most important, because that'll help your champions get their skills away. Now, with accuracy, it works like, okay, level 1, as long as you have 10 accuracy, you've got a great chance of getting your skills away. At level 10, if you have 100 accuracy, okay, you're pretty good, and, and so on, you know, level 20, you want 200 accuracy. Now, the champions I'll be using in the game will be... Mother Sabelli. Now the reason I use Mother Sabelli is she's got speed. So you want to have this, a lot of speed in your team. So try to put a champion up front who has a speed boost. And she has a speed boost of 24%. So that's going to benefit my other players as well in the group. You can see I've got her build out with a lot of speed. So around the 250 mark in speed, as you can see, speed here and resilience HP defense to give her that extra boost. Now her skills are Mask of Dread. Tax all enemies has a 25 chance of placing a 30% decreased speed debuff for two turns. So if she can get that skill away, that's going to slow down the enemy as well than getting chances to attack you as well. Also, this fills the champion's turn meter by 15%. Now I have her booked out, so that's why she gains the additional damage and buffs and chances here. Now her Soul Shepherd is the best move for my other champions. It places a revive on death buff and a 60% increased defense buff on allies for two turns. And I book that down so it comes down to three turns. Uncanny Treasury. Swaps HP with an ally. If there's a champion HP is equal to higher than the targets after the swap, fills the champion's turn meter by 40%. Places a 30% increased speed buff on this champion for two turns and places a block damage buff on the target ally for one turn. If this champion's HP is lower than the targets after the swap, fills the target turn meter by 40%, places a 30% increased speed buff on them for two turns, and places a block damage buff on this champion for one turn. Also places two 15% continuous heal buffs on this champion for one turn. So as you get increased speed, block damage, continuous heal, and it's on three turns. This is another fantastic thing. So if one of your nukers, that's a hard hit of champions you've got in your team, it's nearly about, you know, die low on health, use this, swap it over, Give that gives all then the health from Mother So Belly to the other champion, and she takes the buff here so she can't be damaged for a couple turns. The Great Walker, so if she fully heals the ally with the lowest HP whenever this champion is killed. But you really hope that she doesn't get killed, you want to keep her alive, so She's there to benefit those other champions for the her masteries. I have her set up an offensive gear. She's got crit rate. Increases damage inflicted by 5% when attacking with 50% HP or less. 
Life Drinker heals by 5% of damage inflicted when attacking with 50% HP or less. Required rank is 3 star. Increases damage inflicted to targets with less than 40% HP by 8%. That's a single out. Bring it down. Increases damage inflicted by 6% when attacking targets with higher max HP. Increases damage inflicted by this champion's default skill by 2% each time it is used during battle. Stacks across each round of been a battle up to 10%. And then I have her in War Master. Has a 60% chance of inflicting bonus damage when attacking. Bonus damage is equal to 10% of the target's champion's max HP or 4% of the target's max HP when attacking bosses. Bonus damage can only occur once per skill and does not count as an extra hit. Damage is based on enemy max HP. So in defense side, we have a gives extra defense there. Decrease the damage received by this champion by 8% when this champion is hit with a critical hit. Heals this champion by 10% of their max HP when they kill an enemy target. Cool down one turn. Reduces the damage this champion receives from a specific enemy by 0.75% with each hit taken from that enemy. Damage reduction stacks up to 6% for each enemy. Has a 60% chance of placing a leech debuff for one turn when placing stun, sleep, fear, true fear, freeze, petrification debuffs. And then has a 20% chance to counterattack an enemy when they apply a stun, sleep, fear, true fear, freeze, petrification debuff on an, an ally. Cool down one turn. So you can see my stats here. You know, it's speed's the most priority, 247. She has an accuracy of 164. But over time, you know, I've got to keep building the accuracy up higher and higher. So that's the idea with getting the dragon once you can get into the higher levels of the dragon to get four, five, six star gear. Another champion we'll be using here is AOX. Now AOX, he has the benefit of he can do healing to your other champions as well, to your nucus to help keep them alive. I have him at just over 200 speed, so it makes it, you know, he's faster in the team. You give him the extra turns as well. His crit rate is over 100%. I only needed it 100%, but I just don't have the right equipment at the moment to be able to give it 100% and put some extras like accuracy here. I have him over 200, so he's pretty good. So he should be right to about level 20. But his most important is his skills. He attacks one enemy two times. Each hit has a 10% chance of placing a 5% poison. Debuff for two turns. Damage is based on attack. But this is the one. Law of Restoration. Attacks one enemy. Heals all allies with 10% of their max HP. So this is AOX's best move. This is where you want him to prioritize his skills to. Heals each ally for an extra 2.5% for each debuff on this target. So with his books, he gets the additional damage, heals, and a cooldown back to three turns. The weight of Aeons. Places a 50% decrease attack debuff on all enemies for two turns. Also has a 75% chance of decreasing enemy turn meter by 20%. Places a 30% decrease critical rate debuff on the target for two turns if they have 50% or more turn meter after the turn meter decrease. Decrease attack, decrease critical rate. And with his books, brings him back to three turns. Steward of Time increases the duration of two random debuffs on the attacker by one turn when attack occurs once per hit. His masteries, we have him set up in offensive and support. So we just make these quick crit rate of 5%, extra crit damage, an extra 10%. It increases damage inflicted by 5%. Increases damage inflicted to targets with less than 40% HP. Holds by 5% of damage inflicted when attacking with 50% HP or less. It increases damage inflicted by 6% when attacking targets with higher max HP. Increases damage inflicted by this champion's default skill by 2% each time it is used during battle. Stats across each round in a battle up to 10%. And then we have him in War Master. We could have put him in defense. You know, it wasn't so much him doing attack to do damage here. He's more here just to, to heal and help with our other nucus to keep him alive. And then we have the support, accuracy. We are, increases accuracy by 20 when this champion has no skills in cooldown. The Swarm Smitter increases accuracy. 
increases the base set stat set bonus of all artifact sets to increase base stat by 15 percent this increases multi active not a additive act additive Decreases the target turn meter when this champion hits them with the default skill for the first time. Decreases the turn meter by 20% with a single target skills and 5% with AOE skills. Occurs once per target. Increases the chance of placing any debuff from skills or attacks by 5%. It will not increase the chance of placing stun, sleep, freeze, fear, true fear, provoke and petrification debuffs. Master Hexer has a 30% chance to extend the duration of any debuff cast by this champion by one turn. It will not extend Stun, Sleep, Freeze, Provoke, Fear, True Fear, Bomb, or Petrification debuffs. And his total stats, we have him at 202 speed, so he'll go second in the team. Mother Sabelli will go first, then AOX, and then we'll have our Nukas come in behind. His crit rate is 124, so over time we'll get that back to about 100% and try to gain some extra damage or, or speed and accuracy. And as you see, the Great Hall, as we keep increasing our Great Hall, these stats here will improve as well. Our next champion will be one of our Nucus, which is Solus. Now, Solus, we have him in some perception, which gives him additional accuracy and speed, and we have him in speed as well. Now his total stats, we have him at just at 100% crit rate, 102 to be precise, 156 damage and 190 accuracy. So as we increase, increase that great haul in the accuracy, it'll gain additional here and then we'll focus on crit damage as well. His skills, Bewildering Blow, attacks by an enemy, has a 35% chance of placing a stun debuff for one turn, damage is based on defense. His Wave of Despair attacks three times at random. Each hit has a 75% chance to remove a buff. Place a Provoke debuff for one turn if a buff is removed. Damage is based on defense. Reign of Terror attacks all enemies, increases the duration of all buffs, debuffs on each target by one, then places a Provoke debuff on all enemies for one turn. Places a Shield buff on this champion for two turns, equal to 30% of the damage inflicted. Damage increases by 10% for each debuff on the target. Damage is based on defense, so he has the shield and provoke, and you get the additional with the books, brings him back down to four turns. And then his Aurora skill increases ally defense and faction crypts by 44%. That's if you're going to put him in the lead. As you... Now, the mastery is here. We're in offensive gear and defense. The offense, we have crit rate, crit damage, Increases damage inflicted to targets with less than 40% HP by 8%. Increases damage inflicted by 6% when attacking targets with higher max HP. Increases damage inflicted by 6% in the arena and 3% in all other locations for each enemy killed by this champion in battle. Stacks across each round in battle up to 12%. That's on the kill streak. And then we have him in a, has a 50% chance of ignoring 25% of the target's defense. With skills this that ignored defense, this 25% is addition to the amount ignored in the skill. We have increases damage inflicted by 8% for the first hit on each enemy, and increases damage inflicted to targets with stun, sleep, fear, true fear, freeze, petrification, debuffs by 12%. In our defense, we have him with additional defense of 75, it decreases damage received from AoE attacks by 5%. Has a 50% chance to remove one random debuff from this champion when they lose 20% of their max HP or more from a single enemy skill. Reduces the damage this champion receives from a specific enemy by 0.75% with each hit taken from that enemy. Damage reduction stacks up to 6% for each enemy. Has a 50% chance to counter attack when this champion loses 25% max of their max HP or more from a single enemy skill and has a 20% chance to counterattack an enemy when they apply a stun, sleep, fear, true fear, freeze, petrification, debuff on on an ally. Cool down one turn. As you can see here, our total stats, crit rate is 102, speed 191, so this is what I'm saying, you know, we have Mother Sobelli is a lead, AOX will come in second, and then we'll start smashing with our 
Our hit champions after that pretty good damage 156 and accuracy of 190 so with 190 accuracy he'll be good up to level 18 19 at this stage our next champion we'll have in the team will be raw guard now raw guard at the moment you can see i haven't really got him in sets or anything he's only in perception to give him the accuracy and this little bit of extra speed his speed is around the one 191 his damage is 154 and actually at 209. Now over time we'll, we'll keep working on the crit damage to increase that. His skills, Razor Blade. Has attacks one enemy, has 50% chance of placing a 60% decreased defense, debuff for two turns, decreases defense. I have him booked out as well. The takedown, attacks all enemies, damage increases according to the enemy max HP. So this is his big, this is his big no, move which he's going to do the most damage on damage is based on attack and enemy max hp his hamstring attacks four times at random each hit has a 60 percent chance of placing a 30 percent decrease speed debuff for two turns each hit also has a 60 percent chance of decreasing the target's turn meter by 25 percent this aurora is increases ally attack in dungeons by 35 percent so sometimes you know he'd be a good champion to put in your lead now his masteries of course, we've got him set into offensive gear to give him that extra attack, and we've got some support on him as well, just to help helps him. He's got a critic rate of 5%, crit damage at 10%, increases damage inflicted by 5% when attacking with 50% HP or less, heals 5% 5 of damage inflicted when attacking with 50% HP or less, and increases damage inflicted by 8% for the first hit on each enemy. Increases damage inflicted by 6% when attacking targets with higher max HP. Increases damage inflicted by this champion's default skill by 2% each time it is used during battle. Stacks across each round in a battle up to 10%. Warmaster has a 60% chance of inflicting bonus damage when attacking. Bonus damage is equal to 10% of the target champion's max HP or 4% of the target max HP when attacking bosses. Bonus damage can only occur once per skill and does not count as an extra hit. Damage is based on enemy max HP. Accuracy here in his pinpoint accuracy, additional 10%. Increases accuracy by 20% when this champion has no skills. So your first move, first attack, well you have that additional as well. Increases accuracy by 4% for each enemy alive, stacks up to 16 has a 5% chance of decreasing the cooldown of a random skill by one turn at the start of every turn. Decreases the target turn meter when this champion hits them with the default skill for the first time. Decreases the turn meter by 20% with a single target skill and 5% with AOE skills. Occurs once per target. Increases the chance of placing any debuff from skill or attacks by 5%. It will not increase the chance of placing stun, sleep, freeze, fear, true fear, provoke, or perpetuation debuffs. Required rank 5 star has a 50 has a 30% chance to extend the duration of any debuff cast by this champion by one turn. It will not extend stun, sleep, freeze, provoke, fear, true fear, bomb, or petrification debuffs. And your other champion, which you'll we'll bring into the team, will be Coldheart. Now, with our Coldheart, she's a new. We've set her up as a nuker as well, and we've got her in reflex gear. So it gives a forty percent chance to random skill to to bring it back down and accuracy. We've got her set up as speed at one hundred and fifty-seven. So she's our slowest. We really need to work and focus on that over time to bring her up higher. Her crit rate. Is very very low it's only at 30 39 we need to get that at 65 percent because with her skills or 65 percent will require here plus the skill will bring it up as what we need but our crit damage is what here we're really focused on with her we're at 199 crit damage and 287 accuracy so at 287 accuracy she'd be right to go right through to level you know, 25 wouldn't be a problem at all we'll have a look at her skills Attacks four enemy four times at random. Each hit has a 25% chance of placing a 100% heal reduction debuff for two turns. Damage of 5% chances extra here. So that gives us 25% extra benefits there. 
Art of Pain. Attacks all enemies, has a 30% chance of placing a 50% decrease attack, decrease accuracy, debuff one turn. Places a 5% poison debuff for two turns if the target is under heal reduction. And the damage is based on attack. Decrease attack and po poison here on three turns, but her main power is her Heat Seeker. Attacks one enemy, decreases the target turn meter by 100%, has an extra 30% chance of inflicting a critical hit. Damage increases according to the enemy max HP. But this turn meter by 100%, this is what makes Cold Heart one of your, your best void champions in the game. Be able to turn that me turn meter back down to nothing, and it's on a four turn cooldown. Her masteries, we have her set up in offensive gear, crit rate extra 5%, Crit damage 10%, and increases damage inflicted by 5% when attacking with full HP. Increases damage inflicted to targets with less than 40% by, by 8%. Increases damage inflicted by 6% when attacking targets with higher max HP. We've got increases speed by 6 for each enemy killed by this champion. Stacks across each round and battles up to 18 in speed has a 30% chance of decreasing the cooldown of a random skill by one turn if the damage inflicted by a skill exceeds 30% of the target's max HP. Occurs once per turn. Next here, we have increases damage inflicted by 6% in the arena, 3% in all other locations for each enemy killed by this champion battle. Stacks across each round in a battle of up to 12%. Places a shield buff on this champion for one turn when this champion kills an enemy. The value of the shield is equal to 50% of this champion's max HP because once per turn. And then we have crit, crit damage at 20%. I went with Flawless for the extra crit damage. In support we have Accuracy at 10. It increases accuracy by 20, 20 when this champion has no skills of cooldown. So that's your first turn. You will get that benefit. Increases accuracy by 4 for each enemy alive. Stacks up to 16. Decreases the target's turn meter when this champion hits them with a default skill for the first time. Decreases the turn meter by 20 when this single target skill and by 5% with AoE skill. Occurs once per target. Has a 30% chance to extend the duration of any debuff cast by this champion by one turn. It will not extend stun, sleep, freeze, provoke, fear, true fear, bomb and petrification debuffs. So you can see here our total skills, we have a 157 speed, it's something we want to work on to get higher up. Our crit rate we need to really get to 65%. So as we get better gear we'll look at doing that. And our crit damage 199%. So you know this is really, with her main skill, is really going to do a lot of damage when it works. And accuracy 287, which is fantastic at, at this stage in the game. Okay, and we'll jump straight into it now, guys. That's how I just wanted to show you everything, you know, how I have it set up, and what we do, you know, for these levels, be the low level player to what I can achieve in the game. Okay, okay, what are we up to here? Now, this turn, we have a chance for the 3 to 5 star gear. Cost is still a 10 energy on stage 7, and we'll get it underway using the same team. We should be able to use this team, team hopefully most of the way through to stage 14, 15. Maybe then we might have to start looking at a different team. Just to see how far we can get with our great hall level at what we have it. So then we know, you know, what we need to keep working on in the great hall. And from the great hall, that all comes from your arena, from your wins in your arena anyway. And that was stage 7 of the Dragon's Lair. Okay, thank you. Enjoy your day, everyone.